what's up everybody this is dj keo and today's uh we're doing another podcast uh <laughs> this is actually the third podcast i didn't upload the second one actually the first one was the interview i did a couple months ago uh i had a little break because i was busy so the second podcast i actually recorded it a couple weeks ago and um i was delaying putting it out until i i found a web host or a host to to host podcasts. Uh, so if you have any suggestions of places that you know could do uh, host podcasts, and uh, I want to be able to get it into iTunes and uh, Amazon. Um, what is the thing? Uh, I'm blanking. Uh, Google Google Play Store. So I want to get. I need a host that you know. It'll it allow me to get through all of these services, and uh, reasonably cheap, right? Re- reasonably cheap. Anyway, so this is the third one. And I'm gonna actually start recording these a little bit more often now because I do have a little bit more free time, and I have the tools to record it now. So that that's very helpful. Um, so this is kind of a special show because we're just gonna be talking, you know, native instruments and uh tractor all day so if you really don't care about tractor i'm sorry for you it's gonna be a tough day for you uh you can probably tune into the next one and i'll go back to the standard style of the show um basically i don't want to i don't want these podcasts to be strictly a hundred percent dj related there are it's going to be music related and some entertainment but mostly i want to keep it in the realm of the music industry and just music in general. So uh, I'm going to cover three topics every podcast. And uh, I thought that that's the format that I found sounds the best, I guess. So it's not too boring, except for this one. This one's going to be just strictly Tractor. Um, so Tractor came out today. Uh, it's been a long friggin' years coming. It's eight years almost? Like, <laughs> Jesus, man. It's been a long time. Um, tractor fans and, and users in general have been depressed <laughs> to put it mildly. Actually, no, I shouldn't say depressed because tractor still works. The 2.9 or whatever it is, 2.10, where are we at? 211? I think it's 2.11 now. Um, we, it works. Like it does, it does what it needs to do. Like, you know, for standard DJing, putting two songs together and playing them back to back, like it does the job and does it perfectly. So from that aspect, I think uh, tractor users and fans of the, the system and just the ecosystem in general, you know, they're, they're happy because they can kind of do their job, whatever. There's a little bit of envy, though. I, I don't know if envy is the right word, but there's still a little bit of people thinking the grass is green i'm I'm victim of that too and i've made so many videos about tractor so (laughs) i i'm I'm, i can't even talk about it like flat out i like i have to say like i i personally i'm I'm guilty of that too well is because i use tractor i use serato and i use record box uh record box not as frequently as serato and tractor but i do use it every once in a while and Serato and and Rekordbox frequently do updates, frequently, uh, and most of the updates are major things. They're adding new features, they're supporting new hardware. In and Tractor has just been chugging along, and you know, for the last couple of years, every time there's an update, it was more like a stability update. You know, they did did add stems and some other things in in uh, recently, uh, but generally, for the most part, most of the tractor updates have been just you know maintenance type things, and so I think that made tractor users uneasy, along with the long wait for new hardware, because both with Serato and Rekordbox, like new hard new hardware is just just coming out, popping out, so like. You know, you have this system where, you know, it works great. It does work great. You know, it's stable. Um, you know, it's robust. Like, it does a lot of things. 
but it's been doing the same things for a long time and there doesn't seem to be, you know, any growth or any future trajectory for people to latch on to. So I feel like a lot of people that are attractor fans have just been like, nah, like, um, and I, I'm the same way. I, I was, I got fed up and I did the grass is greener video. And then I did the video about, oh, they got some money. So let's see what they do. And I wanted to give it a break, give it a couple months just to see if we see anything. And and they, they've made some progress. So they came out with the S2 and the S4 Mark III. I think it's Mark III. And they came out with Tractor 3.0. Now, I've been using Tractor 3.0 for a couple hours. And first impressions are, this is a resource hog, but okay. Uh, my, my CPU can handle it, but I, I saw it, the CPU notched up a little bit. Uh... I have an i5, um, I'll say two year old i5. So it it's fast, it's fast enough, put it like that. Um, so j just in general, it it ran okay. So I guess first things first, let me get into the story. If you've seen the video, I released earlier today or yesterday by the time you actually hear this. Uh, I just initially installed Tractor onto my laptop. So I just those fresh install and I uh, went over to my, my table where my, my DJ gear is plugged it in and uh, I immediately just flipped around some songs. I was going to try and do some doubles and just see uh, how it sounded. And <laughs> And uh, what song was I playing? I think it's Common Resurrection, uh, Pete Rock Remix. And so I started playing it. And uh, while I was setting up the queuing for the next, uh, the other CDJ, uh, it just started slowing down. And <laughs> at first I was freaking out. I, it, no, at first I was mad because I was like, oh, come on, man. Of all the bugs, this is a terrible bug. This does not instill confidence in me to go use this at a gig. And I honestly, I, I wouldn't suggest anybody uh, using Tractor 3.0 at a gig yet. Um, I Honestly, I need to do uh, a deep, deep <laughs> uh, power uh, set, I guess. I don't know, long, longer than, I guess, three hours. Uh, like, I, basically what I do when there's over there, whenever there's an update, I do an hour set of me just, you know, playing around, trying different things. And then I record it, another set right after that. And um, based on what I did before, and I just try and give it a stress test, trying different things, even things I don't normally do when I DJ, just to see, like, you know, how it responds or whatever. And then I uh, I restart my computer over and then do it again. And then uh, the last thing I do is autoplay. So uh, I run this program called uh, Latency Mon. What's it called? Yeah, latency mod. And uh, I run in the background, and then uh, I just uh, run uh, basically a playlist or whatever and let it flip between songs and just let it go for like an hour or two. And I come back and, and I see uh, if there's any issues with the hardware, any issues with the software. Uh, it basically tells you if there's any conflicts with your drivers, if anything's bugging your computer. Or anything's gonna make it not run efficiently. Uh, I I don't know if this is for Mac. Um, I could probably look into that, but I know in particular there's a couple programs for PC that you can go through and you can stress test your laptop. And if there's any issues, 
uh, coming from the USB or even from the software itself. If there's any issues, it'll pop up and tell you exactly what it is, how big of a problem it is, uh, when it affected it. And, you know, it's, it's so helpful. This is a very good program. Uh, I've come across a couple of issues with my laptop and I was able to like, you know, figure out, okay, I need to fix this driver or whatever. And to try and make it my laptop as, as rock solid as possible. So I haven't done that yet with the uh, tractor three. So I'm horrified to even try and do a gig. And I, I have to play out this weekend. So <laughs> I'm, I'm not even going to actually fool around, like actually really, really go hard on it until maybe Sunday or Monday. So, uh, this is honestly just video or audio is just my initial thoughts about the process and where we're at with tractor. So the update ran smooth. It was pretty quick. Didn't take that long to do. And one of the big issues or that makes me worry about doing anytime there's a new software that comes out is that I had to make sure that it wasn't going to go over my previous tractor or my or my uh mess up my library in iTunes because I use iTunes to sync between all three programs and now four programs. So uh, I had to make sure I wasn't gonna erase any files and and iTunes was gonna survive it. So uh iTunes seems to be good and it installed separately and it did not go over my previous tractor install. So that's a really good thing. So I'm happy that um, if I do have any issues, I can always flip back to to Tractor 2.11, wherever it is. I think it's 2.11. Uh, so that was a big thing for me. I had to make sure that you know it would survive that and go forward. So my initial first thoughts about the Tractors, the visual of the software, is that it looks a little bit updated, more modern. And I like that. The only thing that <laughs> they still don't address larger monitors for some reason. So for uh, for anybody on PC, you basically have to go into compatibility. Uh, you have to go into properties and compatibility and check to uh, enhance your monitor. Whatever I forgot what it's called. I'll probably put it in the in the description thing. But you have to do that, otherwise it's going to look really stupid on your, on your monitor and it, it doesn't make sense why they would still not support larger monitors. Like that's insane to me. That's <laughs> the, it's right out the box. It should be sharp and support bigger. There's, I still don't get it. Uh, my other issue with it, and I'm just going to go a couple of pet peeves and then get into things I do like, but my other issue with it is that while they've updated the, the engine, that runs the actual files when you're playing music. They've updated that and it calls it elastic something. I forgot what it's called. So they've, they've updated. So uh, when you slow down your sample, it, it sounds more realistic and smoother and it'll keep the pitch better. It does sound better. I absolutely, I can attest to that. It absolutely sounds better. However, I really was hoping that when they go from two point whatever into 3.0 it was going to be a completely fresh brand new engine from scratch and basically it looks like they skinned the older model and updated the sound engine so <laughs> my, my issue with that is that when you can do it over from scratch, while you're going to introduce a few more bugs and stuff you got to deal with that you hadn't had to deal with before, um, you can optimize the the software for the new current uh, hardware that we have out right now. This same software is the, the thing that's been running for the last 10, 12 years, whatever it is, and Tractor initially came back out. So... It's it's more like a patch than like a completely new uh, system because like Serato Scratch Live into Serato DJ to two completely different beasts and they got rid of a lot of the bloatware and stuff that was in there and they, and unfortunately they got rid of some things I did love 
I love the integration from uh, Ableton. I love that. That was amazing. The mixtape thing they were doing, that was amazing. Um, so unfortunately, you know, when they switched over from Scratch Live to Serato DJ, they lost a lot of that stuff. And I doubt those features are coming back. So, you know, like, it's not going to be a, all rainbows and, you know, <laughs> unicorns when they do finally switch over the engine and the software completely from scratch. Like, it's not going to be... Um, you're just going to have this issue. Like you, you're going to have to give up some stuff, but switching the engine from something that's, that was designed to be 32 bit and you kind of shoehorn 64 bit onto it. It's just not the way to go. It needs to be 64 bit from the ground up. And, and it, I, I say this as somebody who went to school for computers, right? Uh, uh I'm not, complete novice in the in the field of technology and computers so like it it matters it really does matter if something was 32 bit and you force it into 64 bit or if you designed it from scratch to be 64 bit it matters you it's just going to run better like just flat out you you know you got to think about it like if you have a ferrari and you have a civic and you put a ferrari engine in the civic yes the civic will run faster but a car that's built to run faster from the ground up is just going to perform better. Like that's the best analogy I can think of. And that's just the case here. I, I feel like that's another reason why the, it just jumped up in, in CPU power, like what it's requiring. And because <laughs> it's not a ground up install anyway. So visually I'm jumping around a little bit, but visually Looks amazing. I do like the style. Uh, it's a little bit dark, so if they can come up with something to make it make make it pop a little bit more from the screen in in bright sunny <laughs> days, that would be awesome. Uh, in a club, oh, this, this is phenomenal. This looks great. <laughs> in a club, I I have no issues here. Uh, if I'm doing something in the middle of the day outside, like a barbecue or something like that, oh, this is gonna suck. Um, okay. So some of the other features that, that came out in this is the, there's new FX styles. I guess they're using the pioneer color system. It's similar to that. I haven't gone through everything, but they do sound really good. Uh, they're punchy. They don't sound effects on, on tractor. I would say they were okay uh, compared to, to Rekordbox and Serato. There's a couple of things that, because everybody that uses Serato uses that stupid echo or reverb. You know, it's echo delay uh, <laughs> when they do their mixes. You, you can tell who's using Serato based on that alone. Uh, so they've added some stuff. They, they, they do sound good, but... I just did a, a cursory, like just, I just glanced over it. I, I didn't really spend a lot of time on it. Um, it's like, how many is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think there's, I think seven or eight new delay or re effects, <laughs> excuse me. And then uh, they improved the filter, the classic filter. So I do like that. I, I use the filter a lot when I'm mixing. Um, so they updated the external clock system. So it's a, I think it's more robust now. So I think it's to help you add in other MIDI things. If you're using machine or a keyboard, whatever you're doing, uh, the linking system is a little bit more robust. That I haven't had any time to check yet. So uh, I'm going to try and fool around with that. I got to get my keyboard from my brother. Um, so preferences pretty much the same overall. Visually, the waves look the same. Uh, let me see. So I changed the MIDI clock and the external sync. Uh...
Nope, time code the same. Deck layout is pretty much the same as well. Mixer setup is pretty much similar. Um, I feel like they moved some things around and they made a couple things a little bit bigger, but generally the overall look and feel of it is fairly similar. So the major upgrade is the audio engine. And I kind of talked about it a little bit earlier. They're calling it Elastic Pro Volume 3. <laughs> and I wish it had Elastic Beat Grids Volume 3, but that's a whole other argument. <laughs> We're not going to rant about that today. Uh, it sounds good. I, I can definitely say without a shadow of a doubt, just right off the bat, like it does sound really, really good. Uh, so it's definitely a little bit more powerful and because it's a little bit more robust, it, it needs more juice. And I think that's one of the bigger issues with the CPU power. Uh, I'm going to fool around because with my settings, my latency settings, I don't, I've been jumping around and I had it kind of slower when I was using controller and when I use turntables, I want to get it as, as low as possible. So when I'm using a controller or CDJ, you know, 192, 256, I'm fine with. That's fine. I'm not going to really do that much scratching or anything like that. So, but when I'm using turntables, that it needs to be as low as physically possible. So I really want to see how low I can get it versus the the last tractor version. I have not tried that to go back and forth yet. So I, I, I'm going to be more on the stress test, um, I guess, this weekend. I'll probably say something about it on Twitter. I don't, I don't know if we need another podcast about this. Uh, so <clears throat> I like how it looks. It seems to be running okay. Minus <laughs> the, it just completely slowing down and grinding to a halt. I really suggest you look at that video before you go play out at a club anywhere. So overall, you know, it's, it's good. It's good-ish. I do like it. I like the fact that they went, you know, they just went screw it and went 3.0. This is not a 3.0 <laughs> upgrade though. Do not get it twisted. I think if you really want to get down to brass tacks, is this worth the upgrade? As of now, with no, honestly, no. I think maybe the the three point one, three point two, when it gets there, and I think they get their feet underneath them, and they're you know putting more resources behind the software and it's, it's a more, a larger jump between uh tractor two to tractor three. Cause this is not a large jump. There's minor fixes to me. This feels like a 2.11 going to 2.12 versus a full stop and going to three, 3.0. And that's just my feeling about it. There's, there are things that I really, really do like, and I kind of touched on it in the other video. So Tractor now supports almost everything like it used to. So you can, as long as you have the drivers or whatever you, the mixer installed into your computer, just plug it in and you're good to go. That's it. That's amazing. Um, for me personally, when I was using Tractor, the one of the reasons why I had to switch back over to Serato is just because it was easier. Because you know, you go, you go to a gig somewhere and somebody else is playing, and you know, you got to do the switch over, and you you got to plug in all of your gear, or you know, like you you can't even just pop in because most of the other DJs are using Serato, so like I was pretty much the only one holding out hope. So like I was basically me with Tractor by myself. Almost all the gigs I played with other people. And, you know, not having to change gear. Amazing. 
I can't stress how amazing that is. And I feel like it's one of those things that can kind of breathe hope into people with with this new system that they're coming out with. Can kind of give you the well, maybe I don't need to change over because I anybody who has to play out at a, at a club or a bar or wherever that has gear already, and all you just bring is your laptop. One of the most one of the major problems anybody has that use tractor is that you have to bring your own gear. There's no place for you to plug in. Most places have some kind of Pioneer mixer or some kind of controller somewhere, or even you know other people you're playing with they have a controller or something so this thing is huge to me it i think it's a game changer and i'm glad that you know one of the 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 big three i should say because virtual dj is huge but i don't see it as much in clubs like for people that are still at home DJing or, you know, it's, it's a hobby to them, virtual DJ is crushing it. But as far as clubs, it it's only Serato. <laughs> I didn't see Rekordbox, honestly. Uh, it's really only Serato every, every time I play out. I'm like the lone person with Tractor. I have never seen anybody come out with Rekordbox at, at a club. Everybody uses Serato. So... You know, like for me, and I, and I feel like a lot of other people, this could, could be a game changer that makes them, you know, stick around just just a little bit longer. Uh, the other ele- elephant in the room is that this is a paid upgrade. You're going to have to pay for this sucker. And I think rather than doing a 2.12 or whatever, whatever it is, instead of jumping right over the three, I think they're really trying to gauge oh, who the hell's still here and how much demand is there for them to go all out, start making CDJs and crap. Uh, so honestly, this feels like they're, you know, trying to dip in their toe in the water and see what's up. So even if you're mildly interested, I, I, I think you should probably pay the money. <laughs> is it worth it right now? Uh, it's a crapshoot. I can't say for certain if they're going to go all in. Uh, a promising sign here is that they've opened this up to all hardware and they've released the, the S2 and the S4. So those are two promising signs that they look really serious. And I've seen on YouTube, they've started pushing creators and dj stuff again because it was it was dead for a minute you know you you know it's dead when me with my barely any hundred view uh subscribers i was like coming the number one video for anything tractor related for certain certain topics like that's bad especially when i'm i'm just ripping tractor apart (laughs) i and it, it it was not a malice or anything like that. This is strictly I would have not I I wouldn't have paid the seventy something dollars whatever it was for the upgrade. I think it was like plus tax. It came to seventy dollars. I wouldn't I wouldn't have paid that if you know I still didn't have love for Tractor. So like I don't want people to think oh this guy's bashing and he hates Tractor. I love Tractor man. Tractor's amazing. So. I'm moving around too much. I'm making noise. Uh, kind of antsy trying to get this out. So, you know, like me complaining about stuff, like I really wanted to get like a movement or, you know, other people to, to talk. And, and it did like, you know, all of the tractor related videos that I did, they were, they're averaging like four or 5,000 views. So, you know, people saw, <laughs> hopefully the right people saw <laughs> and they didn't think I was being too sarcastic, but you know, people did definitely see it. Um, I probably should have done a little bit more polished version of it. That didn't look like I was bashing and hating, but yeah, hindsight's twenty twenty. I didn't think it was going to be that big. I was just venting cause I was annoyed that day. <laughs> I think that's the lesson. The more, you know. Um, so anyways, 
I'm on the fence about should you upgrade or not. I, right now, it's just kind of like, eh, maybe from a, I know it's a contradiction here because I'm telling everybody you need to support this thing so they know that you guys have his back and he can really pump resources into it and do something with it. However, this first installment is an okay upgrade, but it's more of a patch than a full fresh 3.0 take on the, the software. Visually, it looks different and that 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 fresh coat of paint under the hood, it's still 32 bit forced into a 64 bit. At the end of the day, I wanted, and I'm being greedy here because we're, we're making movements, but I wanted a fresh, fresh install from, from scratch. And that's that we didn't get that yet. So we'll see for the future. Um, things I do like. So I talked about the being able to play in a different software. That's amazing. Uh, visually, I do like it. I think it's way more polished and, and it does look good, even if you have to force it into position. Um, I do like the effects. I think a lot of the sounds, it sounds really good. Some of the new stuff that they put in there is really good. Uh, I'm hoping that they, they tweak the library thing a little bit more. It seems fast and responsive. I wouldn't say it's faster than the old tractor, uh, but it, it seems a little bit. It seems fast, put it like that. I haven't. I, haven't, I honestly haven't spent enough time going back and forth, so you know this podcast is kind of premature. But I just wanted to get my thoughts out and see how I feel when it's fresh. Um, it feels good. This, the, using it and, you know, how everything works, like everything's where it's supposed to be. It it does feel good, you know, playing with it for the little time. I had, I'll say like a couple hours. It felt good. I did switch between that and Serato. And I still think Serato's be with the ugly stick. I don't, I don't like that design. It doesn't look modern. Uh, Record box looks freaking modern and tractor now looks modern. Serato looks like garbage still to me. Um, I still have fun using Serato and I'm not hating on Serato in particular. I just visually, I don't think it looks appealing. It it looks ugly and <laughs> we'll just leave it like that. I think it looks ugly. So, Record box looks like a modern version of what, uh, what Serato is supposed to be. Excuse me, I almost coughed. <clears throat> yeah, my cold's gone, but the mucus, man. Anyways, side the side topic. <laughs> um, what else do I want to talk about? I think that's it, really, for for tractor. I like it. I do like it. Um, I wish there was more, but you know, I listen, I understand that they, they do finally got resources and they just started mashing things together and working. So I, I'm patient. I waited five months without saying anything. So I think that was the last video. No longer, maybe almost six months was the last video I made about tractor. So like I, I'm a patient dude, man. I'll sit this out and see what happens. Uh, I want I want this thing to succeed. I love Tractor. I love the software, and I want this thing to succeed. So uh, it's important to me. That's why I like when I saw it was out today. I, I immediately bought it. I didn't, I didn't even say, "Well, let's see what some reviews are or whatever." I was like, immediately, yes, let me get that. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm rambling. It's kind of out the top of the head. It's like it's about two o'clock in the morning right now, and I've I've had a brewski, a drink of water right now, I'm trying to be healthy, I'm trying to live, man. Um, 
This is when you know the podcast is going off the rail. Yo, talking for hours straight is difficult on one topic. I'm I'm just gonna leave it like that. Excuse me while I take my water sip. So what do I feel for the future of this? Uh as I said earlier, I think that the releasing of the S two and four is a very good sign and I like what they're doing with the haptic feedback and and you know screens and stuff like that. I like I like where they're going with that. I want a CDJ. <laughs> I would love a CD. Actually, it doesn't even have to have a CDJ. A controller in the shape of a CDJ with a huge screen on it. Give me that, please. I'm begging. It don't. I don't. It doesn't have to be motorized. It's probably going to be motorized, and it's going to probably add to the cost. But that's fine. If I can get something closer to the Denon than the Rain 12, yay. Um, I'm all on board that train. So if if that's where they're going, hopefully, hopefully. I'm in quotation marks now. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I feel, I think Tractor and Native Instruments are going to try and hedge their bets and try and do... Because they've, for the last couple of years, they've gone experimental. So they released the D2 and the S8. You know, like they they've they've gone off the they've gone off the reservation, to use a phrase, and they've tried to do stuff that's different, and the response has not been great. <laughs> I mean, like I, I think Carl Cox is the only person using D2s at this point. Uh, so it it has been it hasn't been great. DJs and myself include are notoriously stubborn people. We like to to hold on to something as long as physically possible, and that's why I have I haven't sold my turntables yet, and I probably never will. I I just bought a crap ton of vinyl this past week, um, just because. Uh, we're, we're notorious, stubborn people, very proud. And so I think that the screens and really getting rid of the mobs and slides and touch screen, that was too, it was too much too soon. And so I think they they probably decide, okay, let's reel it back. We go with two basic controllers. Everybody knows what they are. Everybody knows what they look like. We'll try and do a couple things with it visually to see what's up. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping they pop out a new Z2 and a new Z4, uh, four channel and a CDJ. <laughs> this is, I'm going to, I'm, you, I want to bank it and throw some money down on this, but I think that's, that's where they're going. Uh, there's definitely going to be a new mixer for sure. Uh, what form it comes in that I'm not sure. I think they, they decided instead of going battle DJ route, let's go to club DJ route and maybe try and get some installs or something like that. Something new and fresh and exciting. And if it does support Serato or, or record box out the box, out, out the box, too many boxes, uh, that could be something interesting, you know, that, you know, people were trying to do install or people, you know, like DJs just in general, if you can buy a mixer that supports all three, sign me up for that. <laughs> I'll give up some things for it. Sure. Uh, but you know, like if I don't have to switch around and then, and this is why the SL three thing was so exciting to me is because I can leave my, you know, my a six at home, just carry the SL three. And if I want to use Serato, I can. And if I want to use tractor, I can. That's amazing. I, I, I keep telling people before I like options. I like balancing options. That was a DJ quick reference. 
I like options. You give me a way to do something multiple ways. I love it. I just absolutely love it that you have my full attention right there. And so, you know, like that, something like that is very interesting. And I don't, I don't know if they can get the license from <laughs> Serato, but I, I do think record box would probably support it. And, you know, two out of three isn't bad. So who knows? Maybe Serato comes around or they even say, you know what? Screw it. We'll get the license too. I'm telling you, if somebody could buy a mixer and supports all three, that is enticing. <laughs> now, if it's got screens on it or, you know, buttons and you try and go all out. It's got USB-C on the back, Type-C imports instead of regular USB. You know, you, you got to go all out. You can't half-ass this thing. Um, you know, you definitely got to go build quality and just it's got to be solid and it's got to be priced reasonably. It can't. I don't think that Native Instruments is in a position to drop a $4,000 mixer or a $2,500 mixer. Whatever they do has to be 1500 to 700 $1,700 range. It's got to be. that. Uh, anything above that, and I think people are going to be like, eh, but are you going to be around two years from now? I don't know. And so, like, you, you, the people wishy-washy on the fence. The, most of them can't justify dropping two grand on another mixer when they have a mixer. Like, you basically have to commit to this bit of like we're going all in and we're going to support it and let, let people know they're going to support it otherwise you know for for djs especially people that they got bills man <laughs> djing is an expensive hobby <laughs> you're not and you have money to throw around i don't know any djs that have money to throw around even people on the radio they're <laughs> They got different types of bills, but it's it's an expensive hobby and it's an expensive job, which takes a lot of commitment. So, you know, like your your Native Instruments is asking a lot from its base that it's <laughs> neglected for the last couple of years. So, like, they there has to be a really solid show of okay, we're in this. Like, we're really really doing this thing. So new gear supporting new stuff. I think those are these are all steps in the right direction. New hardware from the ground up. I keep repeating myself, man. And <laughs> I said this when, but right before I start recording, I was trying. I was thinking to myself like I don't want to filibuster and keep repeating things, but talking for hours hard. Uh, I'm probably gonna tap out somewhere forty five minutes, fifty minutes. I'm not sure how long I've been going so far, but yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely, I'm, I don't think I'm going to make an hour here. <clears throat> I think, I think I made my points. Uh, I hope it wasn't too boring and <laughs> we're, we're going to have other topics. I'm probably going to record another one this weekend. So I, I'm personally, I would like to bank as many as possible and just keep them fresh. I I don't think I could do day to day. That's probably too much at this point, but one a week I can handle that. And videos, the pause in videos wasn't because I wasn't enthused about it. And this is, we're off tractor now. So like if you're, if all you care about hearing is tractor and you want to tune out, you can, you can cut off here. Anybody who's been a part of the channel and wants to know, like, dude, what the hell? Uh, you can keep listening so <laughs> I can probably go into this. Uh, so, basically, during this summer, I got swamped. I know it's a humble brag, but uh, I got swamped, and I wasn't happy visually how the videos looked from a uh, editing and color standpoint, not so much like quality or how I was making them. I was, that was fine with me and people generally liked it for the most part. So I feel I'm comfortable with that, but, uh, visually I, I wanted it to, to look a bit more, not like a movie, but like 
it, the quality wasn't there for my camera. So uh, instead of buying a mixer this summer, I bought a whole new camera system and lenses, which proved to be way more expensive than buying the mixer. <laughs> The other reason, excuse me, the other reason why I bought this camera is because uh, when I shot the first interview, uh, I had to stop every 30, 20, 25 minutes or so. I had to stop the camera and go. So it required another person in the studio to help me film the different cameras and crap. So I ended up buying two GoPros and then this camera. It's a GH4 Panasonic. Amazing video. I love it. And I actually shot a couple of videos for some other topics already with it. Uh, I just haven't edited them yet because I was kind of waiting for this to happen first. Because I didn't think it made sense to jump around. Anyway, so. Um, so I got the camera. I've been doing test stuff and trying to get myself better acquainted with the camera and visually how I want the stuff to look. And so I had to take a little bit of a break uh, cutting videos. And, and it hurt me because <laughs> I was hitting a plateau and I just stalled for new subscribers and, and interest in the channel. Uh, so I'm going to have to make that up triple time over for the next couple of months. But uh, I do have the topics and stuff and I'm going to be doing more interviews and stuff like that soon. Uh, but the key thing was I needed a system where I could press record and walk away and leave it and it would go for two hours. Uh, this Panasonic here, uh, based on the one battery I have, I can do two and a half hours straight, nonstop. Uh, same with GoPros, I think like hour and a half. Almost, almost two hours. I'd say hour and, hour and a half, hour, hour 35 minutes give or take so um i had the people lined up but i just wasn't ready so i was like dude i gotta stop <laughs> and this is one of the huge problems with doing this thing yourself and being notoriously stubborn and uh independent i guess i guess that's the right word uh, i've just been like ah man i gotta well, I can't do it yet because I don't have the thing I need. And so I, I wanted to wait till I got the thing I need. And then and then it waits. It just turns into another month and then another week and whatever. So when you're doing everything yourself, <laughs> it, it takes longer than it probably should have. Uh, but the goal was to be self-sufficient because uh, I got some interviews down in uh, Virginia and Atlanta that I need to fly down for. But I couldn't fly down with the, you know, have people take time off work or whatever. And so, like, I wanted to be able to one man it. And I want to knock out these other videos first before I fly down to Atlanta and try and do this thing down there. So um, I I think it's going to be good. There's a couple of people that I'm going to reach out to soon. So... I don't know if I can do an interview a month. That's probably going to be more sporadic because I'm more based on their schedules and mine. <laughs> and I can't do this full time, obviously. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But the podcast is going to be very weekly. And uh, the other videos are going to come out a little bit more frequent now, too. I uh, want to try and shoot whenever I do a video, shoot maybe two videos. Just so I have them banked out there and I can just pop them in. I think I have maybe four or five videos already recorded, but not edited. Uh, and I kind of have like a format for just how to punch stuff in. I just got to listen to it, make sure I didn't say anything stupid because that's happened before. <laughs> so uh, I, I do have a couple topics to, for stuff that I, I don't think were they would get hurt by the timing of if I, I didn't put it out immediately. And it's one of those other things too, that I don't want to be, you know, forced. I got to rush out and, and put this video out today because it's so topical. Um, this is more a case of, you know, I, when it's ready, it's ready. And that's when I can do it. 
<laughs> I honestly think that's the best way to go about this stuff. But you know what? We'll see. Uh, thank you for listening and sitting through this ramble. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I I don't know if I'm getting better. I, I would love your feedback if, if I'm getting better at talking and stuff like that. The whole point of me doing this thing in the first place was to kind of force me out of my shell and just to kind of do something that I do love. I love DJing and I want to talk about it and these things that interest me. And but, uh, you know, it was other side thing of, you know, just to force me to do something that I like. I'm one of these creative type people where I got to do something and I want to do stuff outside of my comfort zone. So anybody who knows me personally, I'm a very quiet person. I hate talking. So this is like, yo, talking for hours straight with no notes or cue points, anything like just I'm just like going. I like guess it's a very big deal for me just personally in my personality and all that kind of stuff. So I think it's amazing that people actually care and, he, and they've gone actually sat through and listened to some of my videos and stuff. So I do I 100% appreciate that. But uh, so thank you. Definitely thank you for, for listening to this. Uh, I, I hope to if you have any suggestions for podcasts and place to host it, let me know. I'm just going to put this on YouTube for now until I can find a place to put it and I can finish the website, which is another thing that I'm doing by myself. <laughs> so I'm managing the video. I'm doing the interviews. I'm booking the interviews. Um, DJing on top of all that. Plus I'm doing photography and shooting people and doing some other things. And then I'm doing web design. So <laughs> I'm keep, I am kicking my ass right now when it comes to work, but I'm going to get this thing done. We're going to do this. Um, in the future, I definitely, definitely want to reach out to other DJs. So if you want to do an interview with me uh, and you want to be on a podcast, let me know. Uh, just leave a comment in uh, underneath the video or hit me up on Twitter. Cause I do check my Twitter, even if I don't post, I'm on there and I'm looking and reading it and I have to revamp my Instagram page too. <laughs> That's like, I have 18 things to do, right? But it's going to get done. And that's the one thing about me is that it's going to get done. Like no matter what, I don't care how long it takes, it's going to get done. So, uh, thank you for, for listening and sticking through this sucker. Uh, I got some good topics for our next podcast. And if there's anything that you want to have, want me to talk about on the next show, leave a comment underneath this video here. Um, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for listening and uh, peace out. <laughs> <laughs>